I want you to go to Acts chapter 14. On your phone, in your Bible, on the screen. Don't really matter. I just want you to go there with me today. And I want you to, to listen to a massive amount of scripture reading I'm going to read today. I've got to read all of two scriptures to you. But these are important scriptures. And what is happening before you read the 19th verse of the 14th chapter is Paul, along with some other followers of Christ, are doing what you and I are supposed to be doing. They are evangelizing the region that they're in at the moment. Well, all of you know that when you do something good, the devil just hates that, amen? He, he, he doesn't like that. And, and they don't have this on the screen, but I'm going to read you a scripture that I, I, I started not to read, but I can't. Because this sounds like the society we live in. They were doing all this good stuff, but verse 2 of that same chapter says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, and I love the word right here, and poisoned their minds against the brethren. So as a footnote, while you are doing good, Satan is always going to have somebody somewhere trying to stop your good from going any farther than where you're aiming for it to go. And so, uh, to give you the cliff notes, because I told you I would, because we got a treat for you, I'm only going to, <coughs> I'm sorry, you might have to keep your hand on that mute button today, and I'll try to give you a cue, because I'll kill you if, I, if it goes on. I mean, it's just rescue 911 time. They got so mad at what he was doing till the Bible says they were going to end the problem once and for all. Then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium, they came there to where all this was happening. And having persuaded the multitudes in church, this is why we've got to be meaner in a godly way, I mean. We've got to be more focused, 2020. We've got to be more focused and more determined because the devil is always trying to take and lead the multitude away from Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. So you can't let up, man. You cannot let up. You've got to fast. You've got to pray. All these resources, by the way, app, website, app, website. You can get the fasting recipes. You can get the stuff that will encourage you, help you out and all that. We'll talk more about that on Wednesday. But there's always people trying to just do away with what's going on. And so they came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, the people that were listening, and you know Jesus talked about some of this stuff a little later on. He said because some of the seed, it fell on good soil, and some of it fell on rocks, and it was burnt up. Some of it fell, and some of it, 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 it lasted for a little while, but boom, then it was gone. This is where we are. Because the devil's always out there. He's a thief. Still killed his... He's always trying to steal the seed. He's trying to do away with the devotion that you read at 6 a.m. yesterday. It really encouraged you, but now, for some reason, it's left your mind. You know how it left your mind? It had some help. So they came there from Iconium and Antioch. And after they persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul. And they dragged him out of the city... And they thought he was dead, supposing him to be dead. And then, this is the whole message right here. This is how God gave me this. Verse 20, when he just randomly took me to Acts 14 for this reason. However, I love this. However, when the disciples gathered around him, talking about Paul, he rose up. And went into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And that ain't the one up there close to Ellerby and Marston. You know, not, not Derby, okay? This is one in the Bible. So see, 
If you were back in this day, you may have been part of the multitude and you would have saw this. You would have saw a man that was doing good and the treatment he received for it was being stoned and he was so stoned, and I don't mean because he drank a lot, he was so stoned by rocks and by being beat that they thought he was dead and they drug his body off. But when the disciples gathered around him, guess what? You know, this is a man they thought was dead. But when God's people gathered around him, he rose up. Now, there are three things that I know you're not going to write them down because I ask you to every week, and you don't do it. You want to talk about that? No, you want me to keep going, don't you? Okay. Let, let me try it this way. There are three things I don't want you to write it down. I don't want you to remember it. I don't want you to text it to yourself in your phone. I don't want you to write it on a blank spot of the book. I don't want you to do it. I want you to do that. Three things. All right, here we go. Number one, you've got to realize that we are vital to the life of other people. You are. That's why I spent, what, 10 minutes a while ago talking about life groups? You've got to get out of your head. Well, I've got to talk in a group. Man, that's from hell. You don't have to talk in a group. Everybody that says, I don't want to talk in a group, is the first one that talks when they go to the group. So what's up with that? We are vital. You've got to realize you are not you. You were made in the image of God, so God uses you in place of himself for the life of other people. You are vital. You can stay at home when life groups is going on. Or you can moan and groan on Sunday. You can give every excuse if you want to, but the Bible rips you apart. You were made in the image of God, and that will never change, church. It might be your prayer on a golf course, on a skeet shooting range, on a boat, in a bowling alley, in a Bible study, in a sewing class, in a craft class. It might be your prayer that saves somebody from going to hell or heals them with terminal cancer or some other disease. You've got to start realizing who you are. You were not made on an assembly line in China somewhere. You were made in the image of God, and you are vital to somebody else. You're vital. You've got to accept that. I'm not going to stop telling you that. You are vital to other people in this church and in this community. You are vital. Not me, not a program, not a nice skit, not a video. You, your human, warm body is vital to another person. And you can keep the blessing of God at your house if you want to, but you are robbing God and you are disobedient to your calling in life. You can't do nothing with what I'm telling you, so don't even spend any emotion. You can't. It's just Bible, and I'm just explaining it to you with the passion of God today. You can't do nothing with the Word, church, so don't try it. Just leave it where it is. Say, yeah, God, you're right. You did make me in your own image. You did leave me here to do some work for you until I get done. And I don't get to call all the work that just I want to do. I'm here at your disposal. Somebody want to amen that? You can't pick and choose what you want to do. Yes, we have dream teams. Yes, there are strong areas where we excel and, and we do really great in. But listen, I'm here, Romans 12, verse 1, till my dying days. My body is a living sacrifice. It ain't a loan sacrifice. It's a living sacrifice. You're vital to the life of others whether you like it or not. And that's just not related to groups. That's every day at work. That's in your house. That's at your school. That's at your college. That's at your place of employment. Here, here I go, mute button. <coughs> I'm 
You're going to have to get on it. I'm sorry, y'all. That's just the way it is. Screaming people, people probably don't get that, but y'all, y'all, it's going to happen again. I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm still giving you a little bit of time to write it down. A church that I watch a lot, the, the preacher coughs a lot, and they just, every time, he, and it's just real nice the way it works. We ain't there yet. Number two. We've got to understand the power of a circle or small group. You've got to understand it. The Bible didn't say one man went and stood around Paul. What did the Bible say? What did verse 20 say? Plural. When did the disciples, that was a small group of believers that understood what happened in the upper room. I love it. On the day of Pentecost, it didn't fall on one person. It fell on a group. God didn't empower one person. God empowered a group. I'm telling you, God, man, he's ringing this thing today. I hope y'all receiving it because he's sure giving it. You got to understand that when the small group, and this is, this is going to just shred the, 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 the philosophy or theology, whatever, whatever you have that you, that's been winning and robbing you, this is going to dis completely destroy it. I love this picture in the Bible. And by the way, I didn't go looking for this. I was like way in another book of the Bible. And God said, um, Acts 14. I don't even know about Acts 4. I mean, I'm not familiar enough to not, like I am Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, and 8. And all them, you know, I know what's going on. And all. Acts 14, I can't remember. He said, go to Acts 14. When I read that scripture, I said, oh, my word. And I love this because when I read verse 20, they just stood around the man. They didn't pray for him. Nobody went and got anointing oil. Nobody fasted. Nobody said, I wonder what's going to happen next. None of that. They just did what they did. You know, where two or more, and I, I'm telling you all right now, you, you better thank your God in heaven that I still got some crud going on. Because I, I, I mean, I, I about could lap this place right now. I'm holding it down. I know we got visitors and all this kind of good stuff. And all, but I'm telling you, when they got around this man, where two or more gathered together. See, you're not good by yourself. You don't, you don't want to hear that on the last day. You're not good by yourself. You're not. You know what was good? Well, we had about 30 people last Saturday. A lot of people, wasn't it? Can you imagine if one person went out there with 100, was it 170 bags or 100? What? what come on, y'all. I'm just talking. I'm being just plain Jane today. Can you imagine that? 170 in one person? Well, that's what you do all the time. We try to pull off big feats in life for God by ourselves. I love it. Small group got around the man. No praying, no fasting, no worship music, no, 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 no offering, no Bible reading. They just come together. And see, God honors unity, and you can't do nothing with that. You're not going to get the same benefit by yourself as you are with other believers linked up. And you're reading the story for yourself today. I love it because... Whenever we, we jump in and we grab a hold of this, I, I'm telling you, I about let the cat out of the bag. I did a one of the things God showed me about this coming here. I about slipped big time. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for holding that thing down. Can't do it. You ain't ready for it. You ain't ready. I'll lose you the rest of the service. So we ain't doing that. But when it happens, when it happens, is when people will understand, you know what, I, I, I got to quit this. Pre-K mentality here. Uh, uh, God, God's ready for me to stand up. God's ready for the Devon story to be alive in me. And so, number three is 
plain and simple. Now, after we get ourselves fixed, we've got to realize we can't give up on people. There might still be just a little bit of life left in them. But, Opie, you, you have no idea. You, you don't know what they took. You don't know what they did. <laughs> Here it goes. I'm sorry. <coughs> it right now okay because it's it's just and, and this is good and I'm not whining and trying to milk it neither it's actually quite embarrassing and frustrating if you want to know the truth so let me finish there's people their bodies and their minds are destroyed and ravaged because of drugs there's people that are living today with scars all the way from childhood they didn't ask for them there are people in working environments right now, except for Nikki and Reggie, that are deplorable. There, and they back there and can't hear me. And anyway, there are people that are so beat up, have such a reputation in Scotland County that everybody has written them off. And the devil has left them for dead. And all we got to do as a church, all we have to do is be willing to just start standing around them. That's all we got to do. I know, I know that you'd rather not even be associated with them. But listen, you've got to understand this. Satan left you for dead too. And you may not have seen it with your physical eyes. But in prayer, somebody stood around you somewhere, and it might have been 100 years ago until you got saved and you got help. We've got to get it, church. If, if, if we got, this is how we got to get out of this year, being ready for next year. Don't give up on people. I'm telling you, they pulled Paul out and left him outside the city limits for dead. They thought that everything they had done took the life out of him. And he may have been dead. But see, there's more power in the unity of God's people and God's groups than there is in the stones of the devil and this world. And we've got to understand that very same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of us because we were made in his own image. Church, if you die and I die today, God will say, you know, at least you heard it before you took your last breath. And I want you to understand, this is not a fussing or a complaining message or a time for me to gripe or say, I'm mad, you never came on Wednesday. Quit it, quit it, quit it. That's just of hell. That's the devil trying to persuade the multitudes to keep them away from what God's trying to do. He'll do that. He, he won't just use me. He'll use your household. He'll use your work environment. He'll use everything from politics to what's going on in the county. Here we go, sorry. <coughs> Back to the cough drops. I, I, I'm finishing. Uh, if I ain't even through, I'm finishing. I ain't dropping this one. There's one thing. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my word. Bless him, Lord. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <coughs> well, I don't even have to say what I was about to say. <laughs> it's over with. And the devil's trying to persuade the multitudes to get out of multitudes quick as you can right now. Yeah, he's just working. He's, he's a liar, though, ain't he, y'all? He, he, he don't want us to get any better, does he? He wants us just to keep this much water in the bucket, and that's it. He, he ain't want no more of this. He's happy with how many people's here today. After all. Things ain't like they used to be, so anyway, I want to tell you this. 
you still got some time left. And there's some people in here today. I don't even know how many would be in here. There's people in here right now that, man, if I just had somebody that would stand around me right now, I just knew I had a support system. I wouldn't feel as lonely as I do at night if I, if I just had that. I, I, I don't even know if anybody's really prayed for my need. If I just had a group of people just to stand around, I, I, I feel like the life would come back in me again. And the answer, the answer's not up there, folks. The answer's right here. God, let's pray. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to realize it is time for us to be true circle makers again. Put our needs in a circle. Put our people in a circle. Put our families in a circle. Put dead situations in a circle. Put our finances in a circle. Put our health in a circle. God, help us to see that you're still not through with us. There's still a lot of good that can be done with our obedience. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, for every single soul in this building, and those that are watching online, Lord, that you would have your way in our lives and, and really have your way. God, our way has caused so much pain for other people because we haven't been there for them. So, God, I need you to have your way in my life, in the life of multitudes. God, and I need you to have your way not just on things that pertain to church, but you told us in Matthew 5, 16, to let our light so shine before men and then they can see, Lord, good works and glorify you. And God, we've got to be mindful of this when everybody else is listening to all kind of music and saying all kind of things at work or at school or in our dorm or God, in our neighborhood, wherever we might be, God. Help us to realize that we've got to let our light shine and we've got to be willing just to make a circle around a dead person, Lord that's dying, that people's given up on because you don't give up on them. And I pray, Lord, that this would fall in our hearts. And God, and it would go deep in the soil of our soul in the name of Jesus. And God's people said amen.